For our 2.3 notes, we are going to be learning about the least common multiple and the greatest common factor. It can be really easy to get those mixed up and do the opposite one. So be sure to listen and write stuff down so you have your notes to go back to. And I'm going to give you a few helpful hints. So our first word is the least common multiple. You might also see it referred to as the LCM, least common multiple here. So let's break it down. Least means smallest. Common means it has to be the same. So if we're coming up with something we have in common, we both like it. And a multiple is when we multiply, we make things bigger. So we're multiplying, making a bigger number, but it really has to be the smallest one. That's where it gets tricky. Lots of times we think, oh, if I'm multiplying, I need to pick the biggest number. But we're actually trying to find the smallest number that they have in common. So our definition says the lowest number that is a multiple. So that's we're multiplying. That is a multiple of two or more numbers. Least goes to lowest. Common is one single number. So we're taking our list and we're trying to find the one they have in common. The smallest number they have in common that is a multiple of two or more numbers. Let's go ahead and pause and make sure you have that definition written down. So when I think of multiples, I like to remember that multiples are more. They're going to be bigger than the numbers you started with. Multiples are more and listing numbers that are bigger, but then I want to find the smallest one. So I list numbers that are more, but I find the smallest one. So what we're really doing is we are skip counting. So multiples are more. We want to make sure we are skip counting them and then find the smallest one. So let's try out some examples here. We're going to find the LCM of four and six. We're going to list out the multiples and then find the smallest one that they both share in common. So I'm going to always start, I'm going to start with four and I'm just going to start making a list. So we have four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. Oh, I started putting periods in there. 32, 36, 40. So I have my nice skip counting list here. Now I'm going to start making the sixes. I might not need to do the whole thing though. Once I find the one they have in common, there's my answer. So for my sixes, we're gonna go six. Now I'm looking, is there a six up here? No. So six, 12. Oh, there's a 12. So the least common multiple is 12. When I'm multiplying the smallest number they can both go into is 12. 4, 8, 12, 6, 12. The smallest number they have in common when I multiply those out, when I skip count. So make a list, start making your second list, looking for the one they have in common. There are other numbers they have in common. If I keep going 6, 12, 18, uh, 24, right? They both have 24, but that's not the smallest one. I want the smallest one, the least common, but multiples have to be bigger. So lots of times we try and list numbers that are smaller and then find the smallest one. We got to do the multiples. That's the smallest. Okay, let's try the LCM of eight and 10. So I'm gonna make my list, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, and oops, 80. Now I'm gonna start thinking about my tens. So I 10, but I'm looking up here. Oh, no, 10, next is 20. No 20, 30, no 30, 40, they both have 40. So I know my LCM of eight and 10 is 40. So I've skip counted 
found the smallest one that they have in common. So multiples have to be more, but I find the smallest one. So now let's try the greatest common factor, which you'll also hear called the GCF. This is really handy when you're trying to find common denominators as well. So greatest common factor. So a, let's break it down, right? Greatest, we want the biggest one that they have in common. But factors are numbers that are smaller. They're the numbers you multiply together to get to that number. So if I'm trying to find factors of 10, I would think one times 10, those are both factors of 10. Two times five are factors of 10. So factors are actually smaller, but now this time I want the biggest one. So we are going to think about our definition, the greatest number that they share, let's say factor of it that multiplies together to make that number. So our definition says the largest, largest, there we go, common factor of two or more numbers. So go ahead and pause and make sure you have this definition written down. So I like to remember that factors are fewer. When I'm listing factors, lots of times people get confused and they start listing multiples. 5, 10, 15, 20. No, you got to say the things that multiply together to make that number. They're going to be smaller. Factors are fewer, and then I find the biggest one. So I list them out and then find the biggest one. So it's kind of opposite, right? So multiples, we listed the numbers that were bigger and found the smallest one. Now we're listing numbers that are smaller and finding the biggest one. So I'm thinking what can multiply, it's not quite how you spell multiply, let me try that again, multiply to make the number. This times this is a factor of this number. This times this is a factor of this number. So we're, we are doing some multiplication, so the other one was skip counting. This time I'm saying the numbers that multiply together, the factors, to make the product. So let's try some out. So the biggest thing we want to remember to do is we need to go in order. We are not going to just randomly start picking numbers that multiply together. We are going to do it in order so we don't skip any and miss the greatest common factor. So I always start with one. So I'm trying to find the GCF of 18 and 21. So I always start with one. One times 18. It's going to equal 18. So now I go up a number. Two. Can two go into 18? Yes, it's even. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Two times nine is our factors. So all, we're listing the factors, right? All of these numbers are smaller than 18. I ask, can three go into 18? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, yes. Three times six. I'm gonna ask, can four? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Not perfectly. So four is not a factor. These are nice whole numbers that multiply to get the product. So four couldn't, so I'm gonna move on to five. Five, 10, 15, 20, nope, it doesn't end in five or zero, so it can't. And now I already have six, so now I know I listed all of the factors. You go in order till you find one you already have, then you know you're done. So here's the factors of 18, so let's try the factors of 21. So we always start with one, one times 21, can two go into 21? No, because this is odd and two's even. So now I'm asking three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Yes, it can. Three times seven. Can four? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Nope. Five. No, because it doesn't end in zero or five. Can six? Six can actually only go into even numbers. 
6, 12, 18, 24, no. And now I already have seven, so I know I've listed all the factors. So there's only four on this one. So now, remember, we're, so we listed the numbers that are fewer, the factors. But now I have to find the greatest one. So I'm going to look over here. Do they both have an 18? No. Do they both have a 9? No. And notice I'm starting at the biggest number. I don't care if they both have a 1 because they might have a number that's bigger. I'm trying to find the biggest one. So I start at the top and work my way backwards. Do they have a 6? No. Do they both have a 3? Yes, they do. Their greatest common factor is 3, right? A common factor is 1, but the greatest common factor is 3. Okay, let's try another one here. So we have 24. So always starting with 1, going in order to make sure I get them. 1 times 24. I ask, can 2 go into 24? Yes, because it's even. 2 times 12. Can 3? Yes, three times eight. So knowing your multiplication facts is very helpful when finding factors. Can four, yes, four has a, 24 has lots of factors. Four times six. So now I'm on five. No, it doesn't end in five or zero. And I already have six. So here's all the factors of 24. So let's try 36. One times 36. Two can because it's even, so I'm thinking half of 36. If I don't know it off the top of my head, I just hurry and do the division problem. So that goes in there one time, whoops, that's two. One left over, bringing down the six, that goes in there eight times. So two and 18, can three, yes. 12 times, can four, yes. 4 times 9 is 36. Can 5? No, it doesn't end in 5 or 0. Can 6? Yep, 6 times 6. And now I have a repeat, so I know I'm done. So once you come back around to the number or you have a repeat, you know you're done. So there are five sets of factors for 36. So I'm going to start looking through them to find the biggest one. So I don't want to start over here because right, I can see they both have 1 and they both have 2. They both have three, they both have four, but I want to find the biggest one. These are all common factors. I want the greatest common factor. Do they have 24? No. Do they both have 12? Yes. So my greatest common factor is 12. So you just got to understand what these words mean. Multiples mean you're multiplying the number, you're skip counting. Factors are the numbers that make that into a product. And then you know what least means and you know what greatest means. So look back at your notes. If you're not, wait, how do I do this? You have your notes, you have your practice. Use these and think about what the words are asking you to do.